So you finally chosen a donor and now it's time for her to begin her screening. I'm going to walk you through the process so you know exactly what to expect. Hey, Kathy Bernardo here from the Northeast Assisted Fertility Group. So you've chosen a donor and she's about to go in for her screening and I bet you are really nervous. Recipients tell me they're so worried that their donor has some genetic disease that will prevent her from going ahead. But in reality, genetics are actually the least common reason that donors screen out. If your donor had a genetic condition herself or one that ran in her family, she would not qualify to even apply to be a donor. So you can take that major risk factor out of the equation. Now your donor still will have some genetic testing and some of these bigger clinics test for up to 300 diseases and conditions, most of which you never heard of. Actually, there are only two items on the genetic testing panel which can categorically disqualify a donor. That is fragile X and spinal muscular atrophy. Of course, she does not have these things. She's just a carrier. Some clinics also test for up to 97 mutations of cystic fibrosis. And if a donor is carrier for one, it all depends on the clinic's policy. Some clinics work with cystic fibrosis carriers as long as the recipient is not a carrier, and some categorically do not work with cystic fibrosis carriers. So chances are very likely that your donor will pass her genetic screening. Actually, it's the other two hurdles in the screening that are more likely for the donor not to pass. One is the hormone testing, and the other is the infectious disease and drug screen. So donors usually begin with the hormone testing. So they wait for their period or they do an AMH, um, an anti-malarian hormone blood test, which can be done at any point in their cycle. They don't have to wait for a period for that. Now, most donors pass their hormone screenings, but on occasion, there can be a number that's a little off, the antral follicle count is a little low, and the AMH, the anti-malarian hormone, can be a little low. On a very rare occasions, it's too high, but sometimes it's too low. But the most common reason for a donor not to pass their screening is something in the infectious disease panel. And in my experience, it's some kind of STD, chlamydia or gonorrhea. Um, these are asymptomatic and they're very, very common. Now, if a donor has one of these infectious diseases, she needs to get it treated and then retested. And then she is uh, eligible again a full year after that retest. Now some clinics do a psychological screening where they meet with a social worker and talk and do a written psychological test and it's really very very rare for a donor not to pass that. Now it really stinks if your donor doesn't pass her screening. No two ways about that. The only thing to do go back to your second choice start looking again and pick right back up but overall the chances are really good that your donor will pass her screening. So I hope this was helpful in getting you through the donor screening process. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more advice on egg donation. Please go to our website, assistedfertility.com for access to the database and more information on our program. Thanks so much for watching.